is fascism okay if our great but also weak enemy is AI and tech bros? That doesn't work because fascists love generative AI. Fascism is um, is the the ideology of the dead. It's uh, a, a, a hatred of humanity and life and art and love. And for that reason, fascists almost universally adore AI, um, uh, generative AI, which is weird because historically they've presented themselves as like, you know, return to Roman, you know, Renaissance paintings, whatever, but they never cared about artistry. You know, they never liked the Sistine Chapel because of Michelangelo's hard work. They like the Sistine Chapel because it conveys power and God's authority. You know, they don't give a fuck about art. It could be anything. The Sistine Chapel could be AI generated and it would make no difference whatsoever to them. It's mostly liberals, though. No, I, I disagree. I think that um, the overlap between people who are really weirdly hyped about generative AI and the like Peter Thiel-esque uh, Silicon Valley crypto fascist types, like that is a very strong overlap. There are definitely a lot of liberals who are kind of casually interested in generative AI because they're just sort of hyped about tech. But it's kind of the same with like, um, you know, it's it's. There's a difference between being casually excited about the tech and being like actively maliciously hateful towards artists, which a lot of fascists are. A lot of the people who promote um, AI generative artwork actually f hate artists. AI art is perfect for fascism. It's just endlessly recycling the actual art of the past, and it doesn't need any new artists. Artists tend to be progressive, free thinking. I'm generalizing, but like relative to the societies that produce them, generally speaking, this is true. Uh, uh, you know, queer. Uh, a difficult to predict, eccentric. None of these fit in the model of fascism. Artists are an inconvenient uh, obstacle to fascist thinking, which is why fascists idealize art from the past, because those artists are dead, and only their legacy remains to be idealized in retrospect. The production of new art is uh, an anathema to, to the fascist mindset because it would mean having to, you know, tolerate artists, which artists and fascism just tend not to mesh well, you know? You have some variety to this, like Italian futurism, I guess, or there are there are some, like, very specific uh, sort of artistic modalities that correspond well to fascism, but they usually tend to be kind of brutalist, actually, you know? All, like, steel and jutting architectural features and, like, harsh, cold uh, stone... You know, you get that with like uh, the the like Mussolini's, uh, you know, um, the 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 CCCC building, the fascist headquarters. You 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 have like weird stuff like that that can survive, but for the most part, yeah, fascism is the death of art. Did you think it was a coincidence that basically every single fascist account on Twitter loves AI generating like Norman Rockwell style 1950s paintings, not even using the original ones, but AI generating worse versions of them? Because that way they get to keep the iconography while killing the artist. Nice. I feel like we brought that around to something approximating a segment at the end. Now that's the true skill of a live streamer. Interesting liquid nitrogen. I'll have to look at it in the future, but thank you for giving me something to read. Moldovan separatists in uh, Transnistria ask Putin to annex the region. That's not surprising. They've been asking for that for ages. That's like been the whole point. Tra uh, Transnistria is a like basically Russian controlled separatist portion of Moldova. Yeah, Killjoy 40k. Oh man, AI art. The psychic harm. Here's an example of Wolfenstein's predicted future Nazi architecture. See, this is actually something that I don't like about how Nazis tend to be depicted. Um, there are things here that I like, and there are things here that I don't like. The rectangular jutting from these towers is too avant-garde for Nazi architecture. Um, the return to Zeppelins is totally in line. I love the dome in the background. Uh, Nazis and the American Founding Fathers were both obsessed with neoclassicism because neoclassicism is a dumb, dead architectural movement, you f cowards. Um, what if we showcase that we're the heritage of the intellectual tradition of the European by making... What, what if we did, like, the Roman Greek, well, like, the white pillars? Uh, what is creativity? What is anything? Um, so I do like this a lot, you know? Um, I think uh, 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 another thing worth considering, by the way, is that considering, like, the Nazis existed from the 20s to the 40s, basically, but if the Nazis were around today, which they are, right, they're just not called the Nazis, but we know what, like, far-right governance looks like, they would be very pro-car. So say hello to your gigantic interurban freeways. Say hello to like six lane strodes cutting through everything. 
fascism is all about alienation and, and isolation. So the idea of like densely packed uh, uh, residential areas, that's gone, you know, especially in America, because this is this is um, uh, oh, this is Berlin. This isn't America. OK, that's fine. Still, in, even in Berlin, even in Berlin, I, I, I maintain the point. You, it would it would be it would be very inhuman in that respect. I feel there are still things that I like though. I really like the incorporation of this like gigantic, ugly and neoclassicist architecture. I think that looks good. Well, I, I mean, I think it looks terrible, <laughs> but but I I I, I think it's 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 ideologically appropriate. Pretty sure the dome is actually supposed to be the massive government building Hitler was planning to build on top of Berlin. How fitting! Oh my God, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's the exact, like, we have no creativity, we have no interest in iterating or developing anything uniquely or artistically interesting, we must return with a V, Roman neoclassicism, Roman neoclassicism, Roman neoclassicism, big for no reason, even though it's ugly and boring to look at, because fascists love giant buildings, because it's like a big f waving dick, it's a, it's a, it's a f powerboat, you know, uh, like, it looks like a giant tit, because they're all Freudian f yeah, it's perfect. The only like real diff the only like real shift here is there's no way these trees would have survived. They would have done something stupid with this area too. They would have cleared it and made it like plain grass or something. Yeah, it's perfect. What does return with a V mean? It's 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 a reference to a thing that white uh, nationalists do where they say that they want to like go back in time and adopt elements of the past. Uh, but they use a V instead of a U because they're doing like medieval writing. It's it's a stupid it's it's a stupid thing. What is it? What is it supposed to be like Viking, like a Viking VU? I don't even know what it's meant to be. Old Latin. OK, whatever. It's just it's like return with a V. That's what it means. Here it is from the man in the high castle. Also worth noting, the Nazis would have bankrupted themselves trying to build this uh, without a doubt. See, I actually disagree with this. Um, I don't think the Nazis would have used this ornamentation on the top. I think this would have been seen as ostentatious. It would have been a little bit too Baroque. Does that make sense? I think that like these uh, these ornamented crowns on top of the building, this would have been seen as kind of like a degenerate. It would have like taken away from the austere masculine facade of the of the building. Uh, the Nazis hated Baroque artwork. I mean, you can say there's a cultural shift, but fascists resist cultural change as much as any ideology can. So I think that building already existed. Did it have those crowns? Isn't that the uh, Reichstag? That's the original Reichstag. Oh, but then that was built before the Nazis. Oh, wait, this would have been after the Nazis. What about the original? Did it have the golden caps on top? It, it, if it was the original Reichstag, then it would have been before the Nazis took power. It didn't have the glass dome. Well, I figured that. Funny how artists tend to um, riz up Nazi architecture. Well, artists tend to riz up every element of the Nazis to make them like big scary villains or whatever. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I the Nazis would not have kept it in this form. I mean, it did burn, so like I guess this is me being kind of speculative. But I think this would have been considered too like Baroque. I I I think it would have. Yeah, like you can take a look at what Nazi architecture tended to look at, and it was pretty austere. Uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page right now for um for Nazi architecture, and like you'll notice that a lot of these buildings are kind of really boring. Like, they're big and impressive for their size. I don't think they're hideous or anything, but they're unimaginative. They're uninventive. If anything, you would look at these, like, looking at this, wouldn't you think, like, immediate impression? Wouldn't you think, like, oh, that's kind of Soviet? Because it has this, like, big, gray, like, uh, 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 oppressive, imposing, concrete, brutalist vibe to it, you know? And that's because we associate that shit with the Soviets, because unlike the Nazis, the Soviets lived longer. All the Nazi architecture, they only got to build a little bit because they got f wiped. But the Soviets lasted way longer and they built shit all across the world. Their inspiration, their artistic legacy persisted. Again, look at this. This is the proposed, like, Hitler Superdome or whatever. Notice the lack of ornamentation. Like, this building is colossal. These pillars are, like, like 50 feet tall or whatever. You, this building has plenty of room for ornamentation and it doesn't have it because that, that would be, like, you know... Uh, it, it would be like, uh, uh, you know, ostentatious. Here's um, the new Reich Chancellery. Again, austere. Look at that. You have these gaudy Atlas shrug tier, like muscular man statues. No homoeroticism in my fascism. Thank you. And then you have these. Look, they want to do this like uh, neoclassicist uh, Roman thing with the pillars, but the pillars are ugly. They don't have any ornamentation. They're literally just big dicks Bleh. like what why would you bother with like 
What's the whole... They're literally like, let's do Rome, except more boring, because the Romans were degenerate, which I guess they were, you know, like, definitionally depending, you know. Running through a few more examples here, but again, like, you, you can see the pattern. This is the um, Archistrasse. I think I pronounced that correctly. Probably didn't. Okay, do you guys want to see something really funny? Well, I guess you do, because you're watching the stream, right? This is from The Guardian. Okay, here's the caption to this. After 1945, the buildings, which stretched for three miles along the coastline, um, the Pura Rügen Holiday Camp, uh, work began in 1936 to create a holiday camp on the North German coast capable of accommodating 20,000 Nazis at one time. The camp at Pura Rügen was part of the Nazis' Strength Through Joy program designed to spread Nazi ideals to every aspect of German life. Building was halted on the outbreak of war in 1939, and no one ever had a holiday there under the Nazis. Here's the construction photo. You're not going to believe it. It looks like a regular, modern, copy-pasted apartment block. This was meant to be their holiday camp. Here's an artist's concept of what it might look like. You can, you can see any building like this anywhere in America. Go, like, go outside. You've seen a building that looks like this. The Nazis were boring. This is why it bothers me when people, like, assign so much, like, ah, oh, have you seen their Hugo Boss uniforms? Yeah, the officers had well-tailored Hugo Boss uniforms. Congrats. They were throwing 14-year-old conscripts at the Soviets while, while Hitler was shooting himself in the face, okay? Like, yeah, great, fantastic. You know, you have, you have one... You get one good outfit and everyone's like, oh, the Nazis were actually very aesthetically put together. No, they weren't because they hated art. They hated art. They despised it because they despised artists. Messe Berlin, helpfully labeled there on the top. Olympia Stadium, part of the Olympic Stadium they built. Look at that. I can't get over how boring. Look, here's the Japanese embassy in Berlin because they were Axis buddy buddies. Look at their pillars. Look at that! It's a Minecraft build! Okay, guys, are you ready for the Fer Berliner Platz? I know I butchered that, but not as much as the Nazis butchered this building. Look! If any modern-day fascist looked at this building, they would look at this and go, Ah, our beautiful cities have been laid to ruin by the Jew. They would say that! They would! They would look at this and go like, Wow, we used to... Cities used to be a bunch of, like, German villages with, like, shingled houses and, like, little church steeples, and now they're all ugly, gray, concrete buildings like this. What ideology, what, what disgusting ideology could do this, you know? Are you ready for an even worse one? Are you ready? The Federal Ministry of Finance. I'm not kidding. There you go. Not a joke. There you go. The monumental office building on Mitte's um, Wilhelmstrasse was designed in 1935 to 1936 at the behest of, yes, Hermann Göring by the Nazi-affiliated architect Ern Sagwil, and it corresponded exactly to the visually dominating architecture favored by the regime. Initially, the building housed the Reich Aviation Ministry, which we saw at a different angle. I didn't see it from this angle. It looks much worse this way. After the war, the Soviet military administration moved into the Nazi structure, <laughs> later the GDR's National Economic Council. From then on, the building was called the House of Ministries, and the wall reliefs showing marching Wehrmacht soldiers were replaced with socialist motifs. Ernst Reuter House, Flughaben Tempelhof, Tempelhof, huh? I wonder what glory to God was, um, was, uh, was, 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 was put forward here in this wonderful, beautiful building. Have I sufficiently demonstrated the point? Does everyone understand what I'm getting at about fascists despising art more than you could believe? This isn't just like a kind, this isn't just being austere. This is like, like you, okay, how many of you knew it was this bad? Because I'm willing to bet most of you didn't realize how artistically uh, deprived the Nazis were, like how bad it actually was. It's genuinely insane. It's why it bothers me so much when people riz up their uniforms or whatever. Like, oh, they get one good uniform for their officers, and then it's like, you know, oh. And then everyone draws, like, alt-history shit with the Nazis, and they, it's all, like, this beautiful, like, oh, man, well, with the power of the state, they would build these, like, glorious temples to fascism. No, they wouldn't! They had their chance! They had their chance, and they didn't, because their ideology sucks! It sucks! It's soulless. Were other fascist movements the same, like Italy or Hungary right now? Well, the Nazis were the most fascist, right? Um, Italy had something similar, but they did have Italian futurism. Yeah, there you go. This is artistically defensible, okay? This is the one, this is the one bit of credit we're giving Italian uh, fascism, all right? The Mussolini facade. 
A lot of those alternative histories do base themselves on real demented plans for the Weltstabstad Germania, world capital Germania that was supposed to be built on top of Berlin. Yeah, but there's a huge difference between what the Nazis said they were going to do and what they actually did, you know? Nazis say, yeah, we were going to build a building the size of like a city, and it's like, whoa, I bet it would look really cool. No. 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 Nuh-uh. No. No. Nope. Nuh-uh. Nope. The Nazis had plenty of time. They built plenty of special fascist capital buildings. They did this literally dozens of them over and over and over again from Nazi architects commissioned by and to the plans of Nazi officials. It wasn't a one-off thing. It wasn't an accident. They just sucked. <laughs> okay, I'm moving on. This has gone on for a very long time. Uh, as fun as it is, you know, to, to, to ramble about this. How does your hatred of generative AI compare to the fascist hatred of art? They're the same. They're one and the same. The people who push generative AI the most maliciously are fascists, or at the very least have a fascist attitude towards art. Uh, they hate art and they think of artists as unnecessary because they hate life and they hate the soul. I, I think that these are fundamentally one and the same. I think that if the Nazis had access to the technology, the Nazi architects and Nazi officials would have been obsessed with AI absolutely obsessed. They would have painted it as like a pure, austere Aryan creation that perfectly reflected rational reality, something they represented. And they would have AI generated a bunch of shit uh, and we would have gotten art that looked pretty similar because those buildings do not look out of the, you know, those buildings are artless. So I think that generated AI could have produced those building plans. <laughs> Daily Fit Check, I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts. To be fair, they would have hated they couldn't control it perfectly. Nope. Keep in mind how esotericist the Nazis were. I think they would have thought of it as like a divine spark of creation and Hitler would have spent like, Hitler would have done like uh, meth and then sat awake in his, uh, in his office, like generating uh, like, you know, images of greater Germania or of like a big capital building. And he would have called his generals over every time one generator that he liked and he would have been like, oh, look, look, oh, look at that. We will have this. And then it would like that, and he would have gotten like no sleep. And maybe the war would have ended sooner because he would have died of like I don't know a f heart attack or something. He would he would have like magic eight balled that shit. He would have used Chat GPT to give him instructions on how to invade the Soviets. And everything would have turned out exactly the way it did in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have he would have fully like magic const that shit from the SpongeBob episode. Yeah. Just, just, uh, you know, Hitler and, and two of his generals out, uh, outside of Stalingrad, uh, and he's just, like, uh, chat GPTing suggestions on, like, the next wave to send in. Do you actually hate Roman architecture, or do you hate the fascist? No, 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 Roman architecture is fine, but the, obs like, obsession with, like, pathetically imitating, and then poorly imitating, 1,500-year-old architectural trends, uh, because you want to showcase your, like, enlightened European... Uh, you know, like uh, ancestral heritage or whatever is f bullshit. They do it wrong too. You know, Romans painted those statues. We've talked about that before too. The Romans were painting shit like like Mexicans. They were painting everything all full full of color. You know, you you walk down Rome back in the day. It looks like it's Cinco de Mayo twenty four seven. But nowadays, of course, that contradicts the fascist obsession with the austere white marble. So, you know. Anthropologists have gotten death threats over writing articles about how the Romans painted their statues. I, I, this is all, I, we, we need to move on. We need to move on. Stop. I'm not looking at chat. Stop. Vosh, please at one point debate this or stop saying if you like AI, you are Satan, Nazi, Solus, Demon, Hitler. Wow. What are, what, what, what are you? Uh, uh, Satan, Nazi, Solus, Demon, Hitler? Get out of here. Permaban. Fuck you. Bro forgot to ask chat GPT if that was a good idea. No, 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 he remembered. Uh, Chad GPP uh, responded with, you know, I'm sure Vosh would appreciate you, uh, you, 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 you saying that his opinions on AI are unfounded unless he debates somebody. You know, go ahead, make that point. Your Discord is all like these people, it's wild. I, I just hope they know that I hate them. I again, I still think that people think it's a bit. Um, I, I, I really do think something has to be wrong with you. In, in the same way that, like, something has to be wrong with you to be, like, a racist or a... Like, I think it's comparable. Uh, I don't think they think that I mean it, and I do, and I don't know how to convey that to them. I, I, if, if you don't understand what I'm saying about generative AI and uh, what, it, what it is and what it means and what it can do, um, then I, I, like, I, I do think something's wrong with you, yeah. I've made the point so many times. So, so, so many times. Comparing racism to liking AI, peak discourse. Do you think there's no overlap there? Like, seriously? Do you see what people... Have you looked on Twitter? Do you think there's any kind of, like, 
continuous ideological thread. Fundamentally, you know, empathy is not a good logical basis for anti-racism or any other kind of progressive uh, thought because empathy is, is subjective and flawed and blah, blah, blah. You can arrive at these positions logically, but in practice, empathy is a big part of it. And I think that like an unwillingness to understand what I'm saying here corresponds to a lack of empathy, if nothing else. I mean, not even to speak of the, the issue with critical thought. Are we still on about AI? You're right, we have to move on. Why were people fine noticing the connection with chuds and crypto, but not chuds and AI? Good point, Thena. Wow, that's an excellent qu I wonder. Hmm. Yeah, nobody seemed to have any issue whatsoever with all of that being said about uh, 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 crypto and NFTs and what have you. But, you know, the exact same people are pushing AI uh, in the exact same ways. And now all of a sudden it's like, well, how, 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 how can you say there's any correlation here? Can the astronomer, if you think I won't ban you too because you're essay posting, you have failed to consider the fact that I am actually more likely to ban a person who essay posts. This is the response, Vosh. Hey, Vosh, consider that generative AI, like any tool, is neutral in itself. Stupid, dumb, immediately dumb, right off the bat. This, it's, it, this, is, this is like the, the tech equivalent of saying that uh, freedom of speech is neutral because anything you say can be taken any kind. It, like, it's a non-defense. It's like saying, well, I, well, legally I'm allowed to say something. It's, it's nothing. It doesn't speak to the issue. It impacts, its impact depends on how it's used. It has the potential for... Let, hold on. Let me defend every bad thing that has ever happened. Have you considered the fact that in and of itself, anything is morally neutral? It's the outcomes of the action that determine whether or not something is morally good or morally bad. Therefore, if something can be used in a way that is morally good, it act, like we're actually like speed running my... 2019 arguments except here you know like it like it, it's it's it means nothing you should show chat this tweet to show them how bad ai bros are i think they know isn't that your gun argument though well it's almost like the guns and generative ai are two different things are you no longer a consequence what are you talking about what do you mean yes i'm still a consequentialist obviously what is that? Uh, what I'm saying is, is that it's an empty and meaningless defense of literally anything to just explain what consequentialism is. That doesn't defend anything. You could say the same of literally anything, like uh, of any action or behavior or thought or principle, like, uh, well, if in some context, racism might actually lead to a utilitarian outcome, like, what, 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 like, it, yeah, the alien points a gun to your head and says that they'll nuke the planet unless you say the N-word. Congratulations, we've arrived at, like, how I made arguments five years ago. Don't don't walk in my footsteps, guys, okay? I've been there. You know, like, it, it just... It doesn't apply to AI anyway, since the consequence of this tech is harming artists. It's harming everyone. It's desouling art, you know? Like, how can anyone look at what generative AI is doing at all and and think, like, uh, that, that, that this is some kind of, like, abstract moral question? It's very, very, very obvious that uh, this there is a net utilitarian harm you know, it's, it's, it, it, but, but it's an abstract. It's not like a uh, one potato, two potato. I get a carrot, you get a broken leg, you know, uh, empirical exchange of resources or whatever. It's, 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 uh, it, it's a big abstract question. The dead internet theory is rapidly becoming true. It is true. Chad is acting as if applying AI to work in general doesn't harm people, but are spiteful because they like it and you're critiquing it. I just think the problem is that the people in chat who don't like what I have to say on the subject lack souls. I just think they're unsold, you know? Uh, maybe maybe their mother, like, smoked when they were in the womb, and uh, it, 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 the, the, the sin, like, robbed them of their, uh, their immortal soul or something, you know? Maybe they walked under a ladder. I don't know. I'm not a, a, a metaphysician, I can't say. Thoughts on the IRS using AI for tax purposes? I, I don't know what that means. Oh God, I have to stop talking about AI at the beginning of stream because it always, it always leads to this. I, Pete, nobody understands, but a lot of you don't even care. You know, there was a 400 upvoted post in my subreddit the other day where people were angry at me for saying it's weird if you, um, if you need like sparkling water to drink water. Like if you can't, if you don't like the taste of water and you need it sparkling or something because regular water is too boring for you. There was like 500 upvotes in a post saying something like, does anyone else think that Vosh has a problem making moralistic arguments when it comes to aesthetics, superficial design? Holy shit, touch grass. Oh my God. Oh my God, touch grass. Holy shit. But a lot of people, the problem is people aren't even like, they, it's, it's, it's like, it's like asking a fish how they feel about water. A lot of you already live in a dead world, in a, a, a dead life, you know? You don't understand that things can be better. You don't, you don't understand. You go online, you 
Zoomers go online and like the internet is dead. Only people only ever use four websites and they're 90% bots. Nothing means anything. You go outside. Nobody's walking around because everything is car centric. You go to your job. You don't produce anything of value or you have like a mind numbingly crushingly difficult service job where despite the company you work for making 80 bajillion dollars a second, they can't afford to hire another minimum wage employee to have the load with you. And then it's like you, you go home and you lack like the, um, the, the, like some stuff you get, if you watch the channel, you understand the broader stuff, car centric in, uh, uh, infrastructure for the most part, uh, economic inequality, you understand stuff like that. Okay. There's like a, an, a, a, like there are things that humans benefit from that are being taken from us because of systems that don't exist to our benefit. They exist to other people's benefits. Okay. But that class analysis element breaks down when talking about something like generative AI, because generative AI really, truly doesn't benefit anyone. It doesn't, it might seem like it benefits, you know, big corporations or whatever, because they get to save on the cost of hiring people. But in the long run, it doesn't benefit them either. It's like a short sighted, universally harmful decision that nobody benefits from. And because it doesn't have that oppositional element, a lot of people think of it in a much more like neutral sense than they would otherwise, which is very, very frustrating, but they don't get it. It's like people not being able to understand how car centric infrastructure hurts people because they don't get that there's any alternative to it. Like a person who grew up in suburbia and never saw a photo of anything else. And then you take a look at the internet and how the internet is f dead now and nobody can even picture what it might look like uh, as a more personable space the way it used to be. Even back in the MySpace days, things were infinitely better than they are now when it comes to like reliability of information, uh, the quality of Google search, the fact that like, do you interact with people that you actually care about online or is it just like an endless cavalcade of stupid bullshit and clout chasing? Uh, like all these things are getting worse, but people don't see it because they don't have anything to compare it to. And the more abstract it gets, the harder it gets. Again, like again, car centric infrastructure, pretty easy to see like the comparison. It's like, here's a photo of what like Paris looks like. Wow. Okay. That looks different than LA. Okay. Let's like think, what can we do to improve things? You know, but then the AR thing, it's just people don't, and people get so defensive about it. AI will just lead to stronger underground artistic movements. I don't want artistic movements to be underground. Okay. You, you hipster. I don't give a shit of like, oh, wow. Well, these like core groups of homosexuals in like downtown urban areas are going to, uh, uh, you know, have like cool art done in resistance to the, I don't give a shit. Uh, I, what I care about is like the average person being able to access meaningful things. Reddit is holding the internet together with bits of string right now. That is true. People always say, let's bring back forums, but nobody makes the forums. I saw that post too. AI art is here now and not going anywhere. It's more worth to discuss how it should be regulated or handled now. Well, the important, the, the in order to properly handle it, we need to establish a good like opening context to it. And that is seething hatred. That's the, you know, you need people to hate something before people can really legislate against it. I truly don't think Vosh understands just how much the American population lives where if you see people, it's because they're poor criminals or have a DUI. What the f*** are you talking about? AI mainly has bad consequences on mainstream art. A art galleries are largely unaffected. Who the f*** goes to art galleries? Moreover, who cares about art galleries? Like 0.0001% of the art you consume in your life is from a f art gallery. People in chat are going to be like, I care about art galleries. I went to two this year. F*** off. Um, you live and breathe art. It's everywhere. It's all around you. The idea of like, oh, we'll preserve real art being curated uh, exclusively here. You know, oh my God. Bosch is so f saintly. That is true. I agree. What is the point of this? Do you just want to vent about AI? Yes. Or stupid chatters? Yes. What do you actually want to happen with AI? Gone. Do you want to ban it? Yes. Because I don't think it's possible to outright ban it. Yeah, but I want it anyway. There we go. I answered every question.